Ah, Pikmin. Such a beautiful game. Everything in the series looks absolutely stunning in its own way, and nothing says that more than the colors. From the green grass of the impact site, to the white snow of the Valley Repose, to the orange leaves of the Twilight River, to the brown caves of Pikmin 2. Okay, maybe those don't look quite as good, but you get my point. Color is a very important thing to any Pikmin game, and that's shown nowhere better but in the Pikmin themselves. Each one of them has their own unique color, which is the perfect way to be able to tell really fast which Pikmin they are, and what abilities they have. And speaking of abilities, every Pikmin has their own ability that makes them stand out from the rest, but not every ability is equal. Obviously some are more useful than others, and some are way more useful than others. So today, I'm going to rank all the Pikmin in the entire series to find out which Pikmin is the best one. Before I get into the ranking, I'm going to clarify some things. First off, I will be ranking the same color Pikmin from every game into one spot. So no Pikmin 2 yellow Pikmin, or Pikmin 3 blue Pikmin, it's just yellow Pikmin and blue Pikmin. And the other thing is that this video did come out before Pikmin 4, so no Pikmin introduced in that game will be included on this list. But with that, let's get right into the ranking. At the bottom of the list, in last place, is the Puffmen. These guys are still technically Pikmin, I guess, but like really, you can't even use them in any way, and they even hurt you if you get too close to them. So they only exist to make the Puffstool a unique boss, and they only appear in Pikmin 1, so no other differences in the other games. The Puffmen are only on this list because they have Min at the end of their name, so yes, they are technically Pikmin, but they can't be anywhere higher in the list because they are literally useless. They are the only Pikmin that hurts instead of helps you. There is no way you can possibly argue that they are better than any other Pikmin in any other way. So obviously, the Puffin are going in 10th place. Next up on the list with an actual Pikmin is the Yellow Pikmin. The Yellow Pikmin are consistently the most useless Pikmin in all of the games, except maybe Pikmin 2 because they can clear electricity, which is an insta-kill hazard. But besides that, Yellow Pikmin are basically useless. In Pikmin 1, all they can do is be thrown higher and pick up bomb rocks, and both of these are very niche uses. Yes, sometimes you have to throw them high up to get a ship apart or have them blow up a wall, but when compared to Blue Pikmin's ability to go into water and the Red Pikmin's immunity to fire as well as deal extra damage, obviously Yellow Pikmin are outclassed in Pikmin 1. Then in Pikmin 2, they once again can be thrown higher, but it's used even less than in Pikmin 1. I can think of three treasures out of the 201 in the entire game that you have to throw yellow Pikmin to get to. But besides being able to be thrown higher, they can also break electric hazards, which is actually useful because electricity is an insta-kill hazard in this game, and there are plenty of electric walls to break down to be able to get to other places and other caves. And in said caves, there are plenty of electric hazards to deal with as well, which you obviously need yellows for. So overall, yellow Pikmin are useful in Pikmin 2, but only when there's electricity in your way. Other than that, they're useless. Then for the final game, which is Pikmin 3, they're almost as useless as they were in Pikmin 1. Just a little bit more useful, because the electric walls are back. And while you still need yellow Pikmin to break them down, there are only about two walls necessary to beat the whole game, and all of the others are guarding one single fruit. Besides the electric walls, there are two other electric threats in the game, which are the Bearded Amprats, which can also be killed by throwing a few rock Pikmin at them from a distance, and the final boss, which occasionally throws out an electric box attack, which you'll have to use Yellow Pikmin to break. But that's really it. They aren't useful for anything but those. So like I said, basically useless in every game, except for a few specific situations, which is why the Yellow Pikmin are in ninth place. In 8th place on the list is the Red Pikmin. Just like the Yellow Pikmin, Red Pikmin are basically useless in every game. Well, almost every game. The one shining example of Red Pikmin being useful is in Pikmin 1 for a few reasons. One of which being there is a lot more fire in Pikmin 1, and it is a lot more dangerous. Unlike in Pikmin 2 and 3, fire will kill a Pikmin if it's on fire for what feels like 2 seconds, and at least 10 or more ship parts are guarded by fire in some way or another. So Red Pikmin are incredibly necessary in Pikmin 1, and that's not even getting into the best thing about them, which is their increase in damage. In all three games, Red Pikmin have a 1.5 times damage buff because their nose acts like a spike to poke the enemy while the Pikmin is smacking it. This is incredibly useful, especially in Pikmin 1, because enemies in Pikmin 1 are unusually tanky than in the other games. So this damage increase is very useful, and the reason you probably haven't noticed it in the other games is because Red Pikmin are outclassed by a different Pikmin. When was the last time you chose to attack an enemy with a red Pikmin instead of a purple Pikmin in Pikmin 2, or instead of a rock Pikmin in Pikmin 3? 
Purple and Rock Pikmin are objectively better than Red Pikmin at dealing damage in the other games, which invalidates the attack bonus for Reds, and just to rub dirt in the wound, fire isn't nearly as dangerous in Pikmin 2 and 3 as it is in Pikmin 1. If a Pikmin gets set on fire in those two games, you can go order a pizza, have it delivered, eat the whole thing, come back to the game, and your Pikmin still won't be dead. And the only thing you need to do to save them is press the B button and have them hear a single sound wave from your whistle, and now they're completely fine. And so now the only use for Red Pikmin is really nothing. There is nothing they can do that another Pikmin can't do better. But they are incredibly useful in Pikmin 1, which is why they're above Yellow Pikmin and in the number 8 spot. Coming up next is the White Pikmin. These guys only show up in Pikmin 2, so there is only one game to look at, and their purpose in Pikmin 2 is to dig up treasure that is buried underground. And that's it. They were added just to dig up treasure. And it isn't all that interesting of an ability, but there are a lot of buried treasures in Pikmin 2, so White Pikmin are very necessary. But like I said, not at all cool. White Pikmin do have a few other side abilities as well, like being able to poison enemies that eat them, which isn't as good as it first sounds, because you can just, um, spam purples. And the other ability White Pikmin have is that they are the fastest of all the Pikmin, which is very useful when you're fighting an enemy or a boss They need to maneuver around fast, like the Man at Legs or the Pileated Snagret. Or you can also use their speed to carry treasure back fast. So while the White Pikmin's ability to dig up buried treasure is boring, it is necessary and their speed is a very nice bonus, which puts them in the number 7 spot. The next Pikmin on the list is the Wing Pikmin. The Winged Pikmin are kind of similar to the White Pikmin, but even more versatile. Their main function is to complete certain puzzles that require Winged Pikmin to be able to complete them, like say collect a set of bridge pieces or lift a clipboard. But there are also a few other things they excel at, the most powerful of which is being able to carry things faster just like the White Pikmin, but Winged Pikmin do it in a different way. Not only do they have a speed boost just like the Winged Pikmin, but they are able to carry items over certain terrain, like water or small walls, essentially giving them a shortcut to where they need to go wherever they are on the map. Another thing Winged Pikmin are good at is combat. While Winged Pikmin do have reduced damage when compared to other Pikmin, if you have enough of them, it doesn't matter, because they can tear any enemy to shreds because they fly while charging, which means nothing gets in their way so they can all latch onto the enemy immediately and just completely destroy them. And even after all that, they can still fly over water to get to other areas and do other important things if they need to. And all this solidifies the Winged Pikmin in 6th place on the list. Up next is a bit of a weird one, which is the Ice Pikmin. I know that I said earlier that new Pikmin from Pikmin 4 wouldn't be on the list, but I feel like the few things that we've seen about the Ice Pikmin so far is enough to warrant them a spot on this list. Now actually looking at the Ice Pikmin, it's pretty easy to tell their design was very heavily inspired by the Rock Pikmin. Now while I love the design of the Rock Pikmin, I don't like the Ice Pikmin's look as much. I don't quite know why, but I think it has something to do with them being split into two different chunks of ice instead of one big chunk like the Rock Pikmin. But actually moving on to the Ice Pikmin's abilities instead of their looks, in the trailer it shows that they have the ability to freeze enemies if enough Ice Pikmin are on the enemy. Now I know we haven't seen just how powerful it actually is, but that seems a little bit too good. If we can freeze any enemy by just throwing enough Ice Pikmin onto them, then where's the challenge? The game would be even easier than Pikmin 3, and that's saying something. But I assume that Nintendo won't make them that overpowered, which is why I'm putting them further down on the list. But if they stay like this, then I'd say they're even more powerful than Purple Pikmin and Pikmin 2. But that's not the only thing they can do. If you throw enough of them into a pool of water, then the water will freeze and you can then walk over it. This ability doesn't seem overpowered per se, but it does sound redundant. Because if you can just freeze the water to walk over it, then what are Blue Pikmin for? They're pointless unless you need to get stuff that's actually in the water, but that would make them very limited in what they're actually used for and like I said, really redundant. And we have seen in the trailer that there are in fact blue Pikmin in the game, so it's not like they're replacing them. So I guess we'll just have to see how the Ice Pikmin turn out when Pikmin 4 is released, but for now I feel like it's a safe bet to put them in 5th place. In 4th place on the list is the blue Pikmin. Blue Pikmin throughout all three games are consistently one of the best Pikmin, but never the best, except in Pikmin 1 because it's going up against red and yellow Pikmin, and at least half the ship parts are in water, or you need to go through water to get to them, so blue Pikmin are just objectively the best in Pikmin 1. But on the other hand, in Pikmin 2, they are still very useful, but not nearly as good as in Pikmin 1, simply because you spend more time in caves rather than in water but still very useful, especially in the submerged castle, as you can only take blue Pikmin there anyway, so you need them to complete that cave. And then in Pikmin 3, they're back to being useful, 
because there is a lot of water in every area in the game, so you just need blue Pikmin for at least something in every area. And not to mention, they are way more powerful in Pikmin 3, because they can now swim, which makes them faster when they're in water. So overall, blue Pikmin are consistently among the best in every game, and sit comfortably in 4th place on the list. Up next on the list are the Rock Pikmin. Now these guys are the closest thing you can get in the game to being broken without it being, well, broken. They deal tons of damage, are immune to lots of different attacks, you get them at the beginning of the game, and they're the cutest looking things ever and they make the cutest noise when you throw them. Needless to say, these guys are one of the best Pikmin ever. I said earlier that the Rock Pikmin are immune to many different types of attacks, which makes them the unofficial combat Pikmin. They're immune to yellow wallywogs, scutter chucks, calcified crush blats, shaggy long legs, and the plasm wraith to name a few. And the things that can hurt them, like bulwarbs, are easily dealt with by simply throwing as many rock pikmin at them as you possibly can, because they deal the most damage out of any pikmin, so pretty much any enemy will be annihilated by them. If they were in pikmin 2, the rock pikmin could have possibly been a contender for the best pikmin in the game in my opinion. But in fact, that honor goes to the next pikmin on the list. At second place on the list is the one and only purple Pikmin. When someone asks what is the best Pikmin, this is the Pikmin most people think about. I've already shown a few clips of the purple Pikmin doing their thing in this video, but those were, how do I say this, pretty tame compared to the true power of the purple Pikmin. So as you can see, purple Pikmin are freaking broken! Any possible enemy in Pikmin 2 gets annihilated by them, and since the focus of Pikmin 2 is the caves, there are plenty of enemies to deal with, and by deal with I mean brush past them with ease. The reason the purple Pikmin are so powerful is because they have two times the attack of a regular Pikmin, and if they land on an enemy, then they also just deal damage by landing on them. Oh, did I say if they land on an enemy? My bad, I meant when they land on an enemy, because they also home in on close by enemies when you throw them, so you don't even have to aim when throwing them. Now after hearing all this, you're probably already thinking these guys are way too strong and are probably wondering how they got into the game with this power, but all these combined aren't even close to the power of the purple Pikmin's final ability, which is to be able to stun enemies when they land on them. You heard me right. Purple Pikmin have a 30% chance to stun any enemy for 5 seconds when they land on them, only excluding bosses. Now I know that it says 30% chance to stun an enemy, but it's basically 100%, because who's going to be throwing only one Purple Pikmin instead of at least 20? So Purple Pikmin basically kill any enemy immediately without any chance of the enemy fighting back, and even though the bosses can't be stunned by them, they still take damage when the purple Pikmin lands on them, and purple Pikmin still have the 2x attack bonus, which absolutely shreds through the bosses. And out of the possible downsides the devs could have given purple Pikmin, they made them walk slower, which obviously is annoying, but it's not that big of a deal, and certainly not enough to balance their insane combat abilities, which is why they are the most powerful and broken Pikmin of all time, and are in the number 2 spot on the list. I know that I said in the last section that Purple Pikmin are the most powerful Pikmin of all time, but there is in fact another contender for first place. I present to you, the Bulbmin! These guys are the coolest Pikmin of all time. They're literally a Bulborb and a Pikmin put into one creature. How much cooler can you get? Turns out they can get a lot cooler. For starters, they're immune to all four main elemental hazards in the game, which are fire, water, poison, and electricity so they can replace pretty much any Pikmin in your squad, and they are one of the only ways to increase your Pikmin count while you're still in a cave, with the other being Queen Candy Pop Buds. But the Bullmen are much better than any other Pikmin, so you should always choose them over the Candy Pop Buds if you can. Unfortunately, Bullmen can only be found in caves, and what's worse is that you can't even bring them to the surface with you. You're forced to leave them behind at the end of each cave. But every time I get to have the honor of a Bullman being in my squad, I feel such overwhelming joy, which is why they are the number one Pikmin of all time. Well, that's the end of the ranking. 
Here's a tier list of all the Pikmin so you can see my opinions in a few seconds. I really enjoyed making this video, and if you enjoyed watching it as much as I did making it, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe, it really helps me out. But with that, I've been AKB Rhino, and I'll see you in the next video.